What's been interesting for our attorney clients is that theories of liability for PFAS are, are really expansive. So previously I'd worked primarily under you know, Superfund or CERCLA, there are very specific liabilities that we had and very specific numbers that we were looking to target. What we're seeing more and more is, you know, challenges coming under the Clean Water Act, which are unpermitted discharges and they have no numerical target associated with them. So if a product or a, a chemical is not in your permit from EPA, it can result in a lawsuit. Even if they have a, a permit to be releasing materials, how different citizens groups are taking samples and finding really low levels of PFAS and other chemicals and using that as leverage for litigation and forcing them to implement remedies that, that may or may not be under the normal regulatory structure. I really enjoy working with attorneys. I love the strategy. I love the logic of working through a lot of these problems. And so what I've found, again, is our multidisciplinary ability to help with lots of different questions. When we work with attorneys, it's not just how much PFAS is there or looking at, at the data and you know, giving them an understanding of distribution or forensics. It also, is our engineers, remediation engineers, coming in with unique solutions. It's our understanding of the types of technologies that are evolving and where they can be useful and how they can be leveraged to give our clients the most cost-effective solutions for PFAS.